Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Very excited to have George Morrow back on the channel. You guys know him with Humble Road, built some awesome camper van creations. Well, today he's going to give us a tour of a mini camper van. So join us. Patrick, good to be back on your channel. These are the Mini Me's. These are Humble Road micro campers that we affectionately call Mini Me's. I'm probably gonna get in trouble for using that name, but so far it fits. Ram Promaster City, okay? I bought this particular vehicle. It's a 2019, I bought it three years ago. I needed to test this vehicle to make sure it was appropriate for what I wanted to do with this build. And it is. It really is a little mule. This thing, I have, I've towed cinder blocks in here. I've filled it with cinder blocks. Uh, we've towed things with it. It's just a great little vehicle. So, yes, it works for this type of use as well. So, I've had the ideas for this floor plan in my pea brain for three to five years now. I knew I needed to get to this build. Uh, but I started with the full-size vans, as uh, your viewers and mine know. This is a solo traveler. This is for one person. It's built as such. And uh, I jokingly say that if you've got a good friend you want to travel with, you each buy one. And you travel together, and then at night you retire to your own private little room. But these little mini-me's have all the amenities of the full-size Humble Road builds. Everything's in here. Come on inside. Um, this is a 27 by 70 futon mattress. This is a custom made 100% natural mattress. It's an inch of wool, two inches of memory foam, another inch of wool, and then you can buy as many of these covers as you want. They zip off so you can throw them in the wash, put them back on. Some people will say, oh, you don't have enough headroom in here. No good. Well, that's true. I'm 5'8 on a good day, and I would say that this camper is only for somebody 5'8 or shorter, no taller. And uh, if you want to go taller, there are other options. Uh, but like I said, this has got all the amenities. We've got a beautiful custom galley here. Everything we do now is made in-house on the CNC. Oh, well, it always was, but now we've got the CNC working. We've got a utensil drawer, and then we've got another kitchen gadget storage drawer. Uh, down at the bottom of this galley module is ABS plastic, uh, because you will be kicking it, and you will be uh, scuffing it up. So why would you want to put your nice walnut down there? And then the other reason for doing that is that we truly celebrate the 8020 aluminum with whatever wood we choose. And now we're introducing that black ABS and it's got a great look to it. Really nice. We love it. This panel is magnetic. This pops off so you can change your cartridge filter for your UV filtered uh, fresh water. Uh, with that system, uh, you can drink and cook with the water from your freshwater tank on board. We have a 14-gallon freshwater tank, and we have a 6-gallon gray water tank. And in this particular van, the only reason you need that gray water tank is for your sink water. That's it. And then you've got a pull-out faucet, and if you're careful with it, you can get it outside and do an outdoor shower. We've got these little fans which are hysterical. Uh, in addition to the one max air fan that does blow both ways in and out, uh, we've included two of these little fans that we found on Amazon, and we just uh, retrofitted them with magnets. So now you can put these fans anywhere you want, and as it turns out, wherever you may want to put it, we gave you a USB port so you can power it. Uh, you can bring it over here at night when the door is closed, and there's a USB right here. You can put one on this door, and here's a USB right here. This USB also serves your iPad. We've got an iPad mount. Uh, that is, it swivels both ways, so if you decide to sleep at that end of the bed or the other end of the bed, you can just turn this around, 
and watch it from either place and then plug it in if you need power for a movie. So we try to think of all of the little amenities uh, that you would want in a small space uh, and you are in here alone. Uh, so if you got yourself a nice set of headphones to tether in with this iPad, you could watch a killer movie, cranking it up like you're in a theater and no one would know you were in here. I've got my lighting separated into two zones and there's a fuzzy logic to what we do with our switches. This first switch controls the lighting over the bed and it is closer to the bed. The second switch controls the lighting over the galley and the entryway. And they are not dimmable. And the reason I went with these rather than dimmable is again, we're in a tight space. And if you're moving past this thing, you cannot break those toggle switches. You can't inadvertently turn them on or off. A dimmer is very delicate, very delicate. And you'd have a problem breaking them all the time. So this is how that will come. This I call command central. Uh, all of your gauges are here. Anything you need to reference. This, like I said, is a switch panel. The third switch is your night light. So when you go dark at night, you put this little red light on. You've got night vision. Uh, then your water pump. And then your, your uh, water filtration. And then I left you a spare. We don't know what we're going to add to these in the future. Uh, but whatever we do, we're going to make sure that it's backward compatible to even the first and second mini me's that were built. So everybody gets the, the chance to get those additional features and options. We are going to be working on designing a hutch for this galley. It's not here yet. We haven't designed it fully, uh, but that will be an option that we offer. And I've mentioned in some of my videos, uh, this is going to be, you know, you would start out by buying a basic mini me and then you can add to it as you go. And that just keeps the initial investment low. You could buy all the options at once if you can afford that, but I'm trying to keep the price down to let more people get involved in this type of a lifestyle because the bigger vans, you know, we're, we're approaching 300,000 on these vans and some of them have cleared 300,000. This vehicle is going to sell for 70,000, 68 to 70,000 stripped, stripped. It's got almost everything you need in it. Uh, I just want to get more people involved and this is an easy, easy into the lifestyle. This will fit in your garage, which is a very, very big positive for people that live in the uh, communities. Uh, and even in the winter, you know, if you're not going to be using the camper, although it will have heat, um, you know, put it away in the garage for the winter. So Command Central uh, switch panel. This is your Xantrex inverter. We're running the uh, 3000 watt uh, XC Pro inverter from Xantrex. And of course, Lithionics is powering the whole coach. That is a 315 amp hour lithium battery from Lithionics. Uh, I won't use any other battery. Uh, and then of course the USB, as I said, and here is a, uh, a light that you can see your fresh water fill. Rather than having a gauge, we just turn on the light and you got a sight tube, just like the old uh, furnace was in your basement. My grandfather used to come home every night and go down to the basement and check the level in that sight tube. Uh, this is your water fill. Your fresh water fill is right here. And this is a, it's a system that I'm using in reverse. This is generally a, a hose system. Get in there. I have it crooked. Uh, but now that's how you would put this thing on with the hose. You run your hose in and then there's a shut off here. So you would put this in like that, your water's on, fill your tank, keep an eye on the fill. When you're done, shut the valve, and then when you take this out, you'll just get an ever so slight dribble. So you'll be ready with a, a rag down there to, to catch that dribble. And this is the vent for the fresh water tank. You do not, under any circumstances, want to have water spitting out of that vent. If you do, you've got bigger problems because that vent hose has a great big arc in it. It's only meant to vent. I know in the old days, a lot of vans, uh, that's how they told you to fill your water tank. When it starts to spit out here, you're done. No. That's why you got the sight gauge right there. And then we've got a 110 volt uh, outlet down here that is GFCI protected and it is in a waterproof enclosure both outside and inside so if there were any spillage because you didn't listen to me uh, you don't have to worry about your outlet our flooring uh, when you when you choose a mini me you will have a choice of your wood your flooring 
and your wall colors. So I'll put out probably three different types of flooring, three different types of wood. This is walnut. I would do walnut, cherry, and white oak. And then I would have a complementary floor to each of those wood choices. And then your ceilings will always be white. This is a marine vinyl, a white marine vinyl. Very durable, wipeable, cleanable. And like my bigger builds, my larger vans, a couple of screws come out and this whole ceiling system can drop down if we ever want to do any custom work or God forbid we have to find or repair a leak. I said the L word, sorry. Um, you've got a refrigerator. This is the Dometic CFX 25. This can be a fridge or a freezer. It's DC powered. And I think when this thing is running with the compressor on, uh, I think it was only about three amps that it was pulling. And that has got its little DC power connection down below. And I left that as a uh, plug and play. So you can take this, this cooler out with you if you want to take it to the beach or whatever. You can do that, move it around. Uh, now down here, uh, this is the front panel to my physical plant, what I call my physical plant. There's a nice big drawer down here where you can bring some of your stuff. This is a vent for my inverter. The Xantrex 3000 watt inverter is sitting right behind this. This is the main on off for your battery. Here's another USB down there. And then this is your breaker panel and your DC fuses. So you've got two outlets on your AC. And we're working on a water heater. That's a 120 volt on demand water heater that's under the counter. And what you'll do is, uh, I don't know if you can get down here, Patrick. We put a switch in down here. When this switch is in the up or on position, it's powering the hot water. And the down position shuts off the hot water heater and it powers the outlets. Because you cannot have both of those running at once with this 3000 watt inverter. So we made it very easy for you. You don't have to think about it. You can't make a mistake. Under the bed, uh, we designed everything so that you have uh, multiple storage options. Now, I'm going to be giving these two first two customers these baskets. Uh, my idea, you know, you can put gear, you can put clothing, you could use one for laundry. You know, there's a lot of options here. And each of these three storage bays, there's a toilet down at the end in this one. So you can decide how you want to configure those. If you keep your head down here, you would probably want to put the toilet further away. If you sleep with your head there, you'd put the toilet down here. To use the toilet, you're most likely going to pull it out into the big area here, the entry area, which we call Central Park, because that gives you the most elbow room to sit down. And then there's room behind uh, these baskets. You can, you can send some stuff further down there, maybe stuff you're not going to access all that often but you can pretty much do what you want. And the whole point, rather than drawers, I could have put drawers in here, right? I can build drawers, but that adds extra weight. It takes away from your storage space because the drawer itself requires some, some mass. And with these baskets, take them in the house, pack them for the time you're gonna be away, carry them out, slide them in place, and you're ready to go. And at the end of the trip, you just slide them out, bring them in the house. Now this is another Humble Road exclusive. Um, this is your garment tray. This is right over your, your cab area. You didn't even see it, but you get a lot of clothing storage up here. It's really very functional and easy to use. And again, this is also made from ABS. If you take a look at that, we did a nice cool little checkerboard here, uh, basically for ventilation. This thing is really very functional and it's out of the way. It's right over your head. You don't even see it. And it locks up with a seat belt clasp that we put in place. We've got little rubber bumpers out here on the extension wings so we don't get any kind of rattling or torsional movement. We've test driven these vans. There's no rattles, no nothing. They are solid. And I can tell you from driving this van for two and a half years as I did empty, and now that it has all this in it, I can feel the weight of these things, but I feel it in a good way between the insulation, this van's fully insulated, between the insulation and the little extra weight that's back here, it's a very nice ride. It's a much nicer ride 
and when it's empty. So out here, we've got a custom roof rack. Uh, I've toyed with uh, buying store-bought racks. They are too limiting and I had just too much trouble working with them. So we make our own racks. They're out of 8020. They're based on whatever van platform we're working on. Uh, we've got these little mount extensions that Ron made on his 3D printer. So those are now ready for us anytime we want to build a mini-me. These mini-me's are going to get built within eight weeks. You order, eight weeks later you're driving away in your mini-me. Uh, so that's what these things are doing. I've got 300 watts of solar up on the roof. Uh, those are Renergy 100 watt solar panels and they are tied together in series and they come down into a Victron solar controller and they're right to charging the battery. Uh, this is a custom made wind deflector. This is ABS plastic, so it's not gonna break. It's gonna outlive all of us. And that just sends that wind right up and over the top. There's no vibration at all. Uh, we do have an awning system. It's the moonshade, which I love. Uh, and typically they want you to, the moonshade is a five by seven awning that you put together with tent poles and you can either suction cup it or magnet it to the side of your van. In our case, we came up with using a D-ring system there at either end. So because the moonshade's got a little clasp, we can D-ring it right on. Uh, but I wanted to use it both ways. You can come five feet, seven feet, five feet off, whatever you want to do. I'll show you later how we put these together, but we put this extension on the rack so you could put your moonshade seven feet and five feet out. Or if you bring this back in, you can go five feet by seven feet out. We like the seven by five. That makes the most sense with this van. And then that just tightens up for travel. Around back. I love these mini -mies. Oh, here I can mention that our, our fabric panels, all the doors, the two sliders and these rear two doors have these fabric panels in them. They are magneted in place and they are removable in case you got tired of that and you wanted to switch out, we can change them. So that's gonna be another choice you're gonna have when you order a mini-me, the wood, the floor, the color of the vinyl, and these fabrics. Generally, I pick them, you just give me, you know, I like warm tones, I like cool tones, and I could take it from there. If you've got a particular fabric you like, you bring it. Here we've got a beige, with those with the white ceilings. You can get gray, white, or beige for your walls. I'm kind of set with this sink and faucet. Uh, it's a very slick system and it's a massive sink. It's a nice big deep sink. It comes with a, a strainer and it comes with a bamboo cutting board. They're very nice. And if you notice, we actually had to cut the sink. It was a little too big for our countertop. We cut them down, we put them in place. You've got your hot and cold water and you've got your filtered UV protected water. I showed you before this comes off for access. This also comes off, two screws here, two screws in the back, and this whole piece comes off. You have access to the mechanicals that are in this galley. This is where we store the induction cooktop. It's out of the way when you want to use it. Look at all that counter space you have down there. You put this induction cooktop down there, you turn your fan on, you're off. You could also take this outside, plug it in at the end of the galley, and cook right outside. You can also cook back here. This is the GFCI back here. So you have options. And we built this little induction cooktop cubby large enough that if you decide to get a different one, a bigger one, it should fit. It's bigger. Same thing with the drawers. The drawers come out and you have access to your fresh water tank and all of your valves that are behind that wall, the manifold valve shutoffs. For instance, if the fresh water were to fail or spring a leak, take the drawers out, shut that zone off, be on your way. You're not crippling your trip. I do that with all the vans. So this has got three zones. This little mini me has three zones. This is my rear hutch. And this is basically whatever you want to store in here. Right now I've got my receipts and some junk, but you've got a, a compartment here and you've got a compartment down here. You put whatever you want in there. I am going to provide you with a uh, smart plug setup. This is the uh, 50 foot cord. You got a smart plug on the side of the van, 30 amps coming in. So if you did want to 
um, a driveway camp or go to a campground, you can plug in and run this thing off at 30 amps of power, no problem. There is no air conditioning, but with the ceiling fan and then these two movable fans that we have, it's quite nice. I think you can get by with what you need to do. Here's that smart plug, shore power I spoke about. This is the best you can buy. I put them on all my builds. And then over here is really one of my favorite parts of all of my builds, the physical plant, as I call it. So this is all that the user would really need to get to. Uh, shutoffs, breakers. These breakers also act as shutoffs. This is a DC to DC smart charger. So when you're driving this vehicle, you're pushing 30 amps into the battery while you're driving, in addition to the 300 watts of solar on the roof. Solar breaker. This breaker is for this guy. This breaker is for the uh, solar controller. And this is my DC house. This shutoff is for the battery. This shutoff is for the inverter. Everything you need to do is right here. Now, if we need to do any maintenance or fixing, we fold back this futon and we open this side up. And again, these are custom made in house as well. This is a half inch plywood. And we, we cut this out in such a way that we've kind of created a hammock kind of a feel. Uh, so it does help with the uh, comfort of the mattress. And this is the physical plant. This is everything. There's your inverter. Here's your battery. I took the covers off of these bus bars so you could see the wiring that would typically be covered. Uh, but look, everything is right here within easy access. I can replace any component in this system really in a matter of minutes. It's that easy. That's the way I wanted it. Uh, you know, every USB, everything is all here. Very simple. Same thing with the galley. You can get at everything we put in the back of that galley. But you guys, as the owner, I don't think you really need to get in there. You know, it's only if something goes wrong, the first thing you're going to do is call me. And then we're going to, we're going to decide on a course of action, depending on where you are. Uh, but that's the physical plant. Now, up here in the cab... The uh, Promaster City is a very comfortable vehicle. It really drives like a sports car. It really drives like a sports car. I'm telling you, it's got incredible pickup. I think this is the Dodge Dart platform. I think the chassis they used to build the Dodge Dart, but I could be wrong because I think these are built in Turkey and they're imported through Italy. Forget what I'm saying. They're good vehicles. They really ride well. Uh, very good on gas. When this thing is empty, I was getting 32 to 35 miles if I was careful on the highway. Uh, automatic, it's, you can get them with nav, it's got a nice backup camera, it's got a smart steering wheel with controls, you can tether in your phone and make calls and such. Nice, I really enjoyed this vehicle. Now let me show you this awning. I think this thing's really cool. And it's pretty easy to set up. You know, it's certainly not like a, a fixed mount awning where you just crank but these are very lightweight moon shades. Here's how these work. Now the way, the way you can use it with a mini me is not how you would use it on a conventional van, like I said, because we, we kind of modified our mounting system. These are tent poles. And you, you get them out and you get them to attack you one by one. There's a little pouch right here that this goes in like that. On the underside is a little carabiner. So now that you got this thing set up this way, you walk it over to the van, and there's one D-ring back here that it clips onto. And then this D-ring over here is adjustable. So you bring it out loosely until you find out where it needs to go, and then you can tighten it back up. 
Now you're on the you're on the van. Now you just pick it up with your outer tent poles. Now these can be staked, and they also have a little latch for a D-ring to prevent it from blowing off. Now these can be staked down. They are adjustable in height, so you can alter the height of this thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a pair of mounts so that you can also bring this and store, uh, set it up against the van. If you can't stake, uh, I'll give you the options. Now this configuration is seven foot by five foot. And like I said, this makes the most sense to me if you want to sit under here. Uh, you, know, you can spend all your time under here. This is huge. You can easily get four people here and a table to cook on. Your outlet's right there. So if you want to bring your induction cooktop out, you want to carry a propane stove. That's right, I said propane. If you want to carry that type of a stove with you, uh, this is the place to do it. George, always a pleasure to have you on the channel. Thank you for taking the time to give us a tour of your awesome creation. I've been following this series on the Humble Road YouTube of these builds, and I'm so excited to be here today to see it all together. Can you walk our viewers through the process that it would take to place an order for one of these? What are the steps involved? Okay, uh, I started building a website, humbleroad.tv. Uh, you can go on the website, you can send me an order form. And in the order form, there's gonna be a few uh, qualifiers just to make sure I know what type of uh, interiors you like. Do you like warm tones? Do you like cool tones? Uh, what type of traveling do you expect to do with these things? Just a little bit of an introduction. There's a, there's a place where you can give me some notes, personal messages. Uh, and there'll be a list of some of the options that we're going to have available. And like I said, you can buy a base model. You can add options as you go. Uh, but that is not where you're going to make the purchase. This is not a Tesla or an Apple computer. Uh, that's basically bringing that information into me, and then I'll reach back out to you and uh, we can go from there. We can get the money out of the way and the payment schedule. Uh, these typically are gonna take eight weeks to build. So when you place an order, I will quickly order all the materials that I need to build this van for you. And eight to 10 weeks later, you're driving out with your camper. Um, right now, these vehicles are selling for list price. So they're about $33,000 for the vehicle. Uh, you can buy used ones and they can, a good one, is going to range anywhere from twenty-five to twenty-eight thousand, so you can save some money there. This, as I said, is a used one. This is my personal vehicle. It's got forty-eight thousand miles on it. Always dealer serviced, so you can find good used ones out there. Uh, the build is thirty-five thousand dollars. That includes all the materials and labor. So if you bought a new one and you had it built out, you're about seventy, sixty-eight, seventy thousand dollars for one of these. And I would structure the payments so that you're upfront with a with a deposit so I can start ordering material. And then across the eight to 10 week period, you'll make other installments. We're leaving a little balance left at the end for pickup. Simple. And they buy the RAM from you or they supply their own RAM? And a follow-up question to that would be, is there certain model years that this kit is designed for? Yeah, uh, any RAM will work. Any RAM ProMaster City will be fine. Um, I would prefer if you could bring me a vehicle. But what I've been doing, uh, right now, I've got three new ones on order. I've got VIN numbers, I've got deposits on them. They are available for builds. I don't know when they're coming in. If any of you know about the, the shortages we're having and the delays, I don't know when they're coming in. They could come in in six weeks, they could come in in four months. But I do know I'm getting three more new ones. In the meantime, uh, I've got a couple of very good resources in my area locally in New Jersey that sell used ones. And they've kind of taken to specializing in selling the ProMaster City. So like I said, I can find one with 24 to 35,000 miles on it for 25 to $28,000. And we can get those. Now, ideally, like the three I have on order, if you tell me you want one, I'm gonna put you in touch with the dealer and you will make that purchase on your own and get your financing in place. Then they'll deliver it or I'll go pick it up and we start the build. Uh, I'd rather not have to purchase them and make those payments while I'm building because ultimately you'll have to pay that interest. So it's better if you do it.
awesome information and I'm sure you're going to get a lot of interest. So I'm going to link to your website, your YouTube, and your Instagram. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. We'll see you soon.